Hey everybody, what's up? It's your boy, Sammy Caps. How are you doing today? Well, I wanted to post a 30 day update on my journey through last epoch. Since the launch of 1.0 a month ago, I have over 300 hours and I thought I would share along with this post from last epoch on their stats for the first 30 days. So in this video, we're gonna go and see what the statistics are showing for the first 30 days. And we're gonna give you a little update on my personal journey through last epoch. I hope you'll join me and stick around. We'll see you on the other side. Okay, so we just got a tweet on X from last epoch and they shared with us some numbers in reference to what the statistics are for the first 30 days of the launch of 1.0. And as you can see here, so total travelers, over 2.1 million players traversed the world of Atira and the peak concurrent users, <laughs> still remarkable, unbelievable. Almost 265,000 players were playing this game at one point. That is the highest amount of players at one time and uh, unbelievable. As we all know, they had a really horrific launch where over 150,000 players slammed the game midweek. It was a midweek launch. So a lot of people are working, but yet over 150,000 players um, slammed that game when it launched. Uh, still unbelievable. And actually, when we look at the numbers today, it kind of looks like it's hovering around the 100,000 sometimes like currently it's around the 80,000 mark and sometimes it'll go higher over 100 but consistently it's between the 80 and 100, 120,000 going sometimes way above it um but just outstanding really for a indie studio to have this kind of response is unbelievable so just 265,000 concurrent like the peak is just I'm sure they're ecstatic with this number. Now, all these players, what classes, what masteries, what were the most favorite in the first 30 days? No surprise, the Acolyte is up there with 31% of the players choosing the Acolyte mastery. Sorry, the Acolyte class. <laughs> Um, I would imagine the Warlock, as seen here, most played Masteries, the Warlock was in the top three. And as we know, the Acolyte has three Masteries, the Warlock, Lich, and Necromancer. And two of those Masteries pop up in the top three Masteries popular with the Last Epoch player base. So the Acolyte, obviously... 31%, that correlates with the fact that the most played masteries belong to the Acolyte, two of the three being in the top three. So unbelievable. Having played all three of the Acolyte masteries, I I can, I can totally understand this st statistic. It's not surprising. It is a very, very fun class to play, irrespective of which mastery you choose. So uh, not surprised at all. I have to say though, the rogue, really not surprising as well. Now the rogue class, its three masteries are Marksman, Blade Dancer, and Falconer. Um, and again, no surprise, the Falconer was a new mastery in Last Epoch with 1.0. So no surprise that the Falconer was the most popular and played mastery. Everybody was talking about the Falconer pre 1.0 um, so no surprise that it's popped up as the most popular and that supports the fact that rogue got 26 percent of the popularity with which classes players wanted to play now the mage comes in on as the third popular class at 17 percent mage has sorcerer spellblade and ruin master now, I've only played the Ruin Master. By the way, the Ruin Master, uh, not only aesthetically is it pleasing, but it's a fun mastery to play. I have not played the Spell Blade or the Sorcerer. Um, but again, I'm not surprised uh, with 
these statistics, they kind of align with what I've experienced. Um, but so the mage is uh, top third class. Uh, the sentinel comes a close fourth. And the sentinel, paladin, foreguard, and void knight are the three masteries for the sentinel. Now, again, I have played two of these three masteries. The paladin, uh, by far my favorite. Uh, smite like it's just a fun build it's a tanky build obviously uh, paladins we're all familiar with a paladin build in other games um, so the pal the sentinel comes in as the fourth most popular class of the five and the poor primalist comes in at a distant fifth and i have to say so the primalist is the class and the three Masteries are Druid, Shaman, and Beastmaster. And I have to say, I'm, a, I'm not surprised, but I'm a little bit surprised that it is fifth on the list. And I say this for the following reasons. I'm a hardcore player, although I do dabble in softcore. Of course, I do both, but I like playing hardcore. And um, I'm shocked that I know there's a lot of hardcore players out there. And when you look at the top tier list for hardcore in last epoch, the primal list is sprayed all over the recommended builds to play when it comes to hardcore. And actually a lot of the Druid, Shaman and Beastmaster masteries and builds are in the S tier tier lists of playing hardcore. So I'm a little bit surprised that didn't bump it up a little bit just because it's such a tanky and safe build. Um, but the Primalist in fifth of the five uh, uh, of the five classes. And again, just these are really outstanding numbers for an indie studio. And then they shared with us, 11th Hour Games shared with us basically the bad, badass bosses for the first 30 days. So who had the most, which boss killed the most players? And no surprise, the God of Storms himself, Lagan, Lagoon, however you want to pronounce it, killed almost nine and a half million players. Uh, no surprise, it is um, La Lagan, if that's how you pronounce it, um, the first time you fight him is uh, very exhilarating. Uh, it's a fun boss fight and also a very frustrating boss fight. And uh, no surprise, I don't think anyone, like probably 99.9% .9 of the player base would easily be able to tell you who which boss killed the most players in Last Epoch. I bet you 9 out of 10 players would have said Lagan. Actually, probably 10 out of 10, to be honest with you. So the God of Storms destroying almost 10 million deaths and players. Um, and the second, this one surprised me, I have to say. The Emperor of Corpses, um, almost 4.5 million. And the second most difficult boss, and the boss that has killed the most players, uh, Emperor of Corpses. This one surprised me because I personally don't think it's a super difficult fight. Don't get me wrong. Um, there are one-shot mechanics with all the bosses in Last Epoch. But this one, um, really, if you're careful and you're just getting in and out of the Deaths of Circle and you're not underneath his breath and the puddles, like, this is a pretty from a mechanic standpoint, pretty simple boss fight. So I'm very surprised by this. Um, but anyway, the Emperor of Corpse is number two, four and a half, almost four and a half million uh, <laughs> deaths. Uh, and thirdly, my personal, I hate this boss, Raya, yeah, Raya, the Black Sun. This boss has my number. This boss is my Achilles heel in the game. This boss is so frustrating for me. And so Rhea is just a close third at almost 3.9 million deaths. So Rhea has killed almost 3.9 million players in the first 30 days of last Epoch 1.0. So crazy. Now Rhea is a, like I said, 
I find this boss very, very nasty and difficult with the one-shot mechanics in this boss. And then when you got to run around and it's, I don't even want to describe it. It's such a nightmare for me personally. Let me know how you're finding Rhea. I personally struggle with this one. And as someone who wants to get a hardcore character to level 100 in hardcore, um, I'm really struggling. Of these three bosses, the one that worries me the most in keeping my hardcore character alive is this one, Rhea. Rhea is the one I worry about the most. Lagan, as long as you got your shit together and you're smart and wise about your positioning, I know that applies to all three bosses, guys. But I just find um, avoiding the one-shot mechanics with Rhea, I find it more difficult than Lagan and the Emperor of Corpses, to be honest with you. Um, but all three bosses worthy of their death count meter. <laughs> They're all uh, really fun fights, and uh, yeah. So Lagan, Emperor of Corpses, and Rhea are the top three bosses in Last Epoch that have killed the most players in the first 30 days. Now, how many deaths have there been? Well, Last Epoch has shared that with us. There have been 148 million softcore player deaths. 148 million. I've contributed a lot to that number having almost a level 100 i'm in the 90s right now with my <laughs> with my wraith lord acolyte build um he's contributed to this soft core player death uh, as the rest of my soft core players because i'm leveling up a multitude of characters and i've also contributed to the hardcore player deaths there have been 3.8 million hardcore player deaths I have added six to that number. I've died six times in hardcore, and uh, I'll probably be adding a little bit more to that number, unfortunately, as we are going to continue to try to get a hardcore character to level 100. So 148 million softcore player deaths and 3.8 million hardcore player deaths. Unbelievable. That's a lot of deaths in the first 30 days. Anyway. I wanted to share these statistics. I, like I said in the beginning, I have just over 300 hours in Last Epoch 1.0. I've been enjoying it thoroughly. I can't get enough of this game. It's so much fun. So for those of you that are new or watching this video and you're kind of in between games or you're thinking about what game to sink your teeth in, uh, I would strongly suggest you take a look at Last Epoch if you're an ARPG fan, if you're someone that likes a game that has quality of life and Last Epoch has quality of life in spades, loot filter, the search functionality, the ease of managing stash, unlimited stash, all purchased through gold earned by playing the game. You don't have to use your own hard earned money. It's the gold that you earn in the game. And they're actually having a sale on it right now. They've lowered the prices of the stash tabs. You can have up to 200 stash tabs, if I'm not mistaken. You can categorize them. You can organize them. You can name them. You can color code them. It, it, it really, the quality of life in this game is stellar. Itemization in Last Epoch is also like they set the standard in video games when it comes to itemization. It's unbelievable. The crafting in this game, you can do it anywhere, wherever you are. Uh, you can craft at any time. It's easy to understand, easy to learn, easy to craft. And what is so, so nice about it is by crafting, in essence, you are elevating and making your character stronger more defense, more offense, whatever you're choosing to do. The customization with the itemization is, is crazy, crazy, crazy good. Um, so if that is appealing to you, then this game has it in spades. The boss fights, we talked about all the deaths from the bosses. The boss fights in these in this game are boss fights. They're, they're fun, they're unique. Yes, 
they're challenging, um, but they are fun. And of course, the end game, um, definitely, I would say, is the weakest of what I've mentioned so far as far as the mechanics of the game. But 11th Hour Games recognizes that, and they're adding, going to be adding more meat to the end game. I would imagine when Cycle 2 comes out in a couple of months, but this will give you the opportunity to sink your teeth into it, eventually learn the game, get better at the game, and then when Cycle 2 comes out and more end game comes out and they're talking about pinnacle bosses and all that kind of stuff, you'll be hitting the ground running. And probably another selling point of this game, besides the fact that it's a pure joy to play, and everybody I talk to is having fun with this game. The fact that it's $35, it, it is. Now, look, I know uh, $35 is a lot of money, but when you look at the pricing compared to other video games, it is definitely at the lowest uh, when it comes to comparing it to other video games. It's on the lower tier of pricing when it comes to video games. So you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. Uh, I think this game... Uh, at the end of the day, you can choose whether or not you want to explore this game, but I highly recommend it. You're gonna, if you're a fan of ARPGs, you're gonna love this game because it's so fun. That's a word that I hear all the time. People coming into my streams and telling me how much fun. And if you're one that likes to level up characters and try different classes, every class in this game, every mastery in this game, feels different. And it's just a really, like, you're going to get every penny of your $35 it easily. You, you could easily get hundreds and hundreds of hours of gameplay with this game. And, uh, yeah, so I wanted to share the statistics that uh, 11th Hour Games and Last Epoch has shared with us. And I just wanted to say, if you're in the midst of deciding what to play next, Give this one a consideration. Um, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Let me know what you guys think. What do you guys think um, in reference to the statistics that Last Epoch has shared with us? Do you think, are there any bosses? Do you Are you guys surprised by Lagoon, Emperor of Corpses, and Rhea? Do you think there should have been other bosses up there? Is that surprising or not surprising to you? And... The most played classes and masteries. What do you think? Acolytes at the top spot. Sentinel deserve to be up a little bit more. Mage deserve to be up more. And Falconer, Necro, and Warlock. One, two, three. Most played masteries. Is the Necro a surprise on that list? I'm not surprised by the Falconer and Warlock. I'm actually not surprised by the Necro having played it. It's an amazing mastery. Um, but let me know your thoughts. Let me know your comments. And as always, if you could like, comment, and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. And we'll hope to see you next time. Take care. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.